Welcome to US City 360, I'm Ginger Chang. Today I report to you from the City New York Chapter Office to bring special coverage to you in the wake of Superstorm Sandy. Sandy is considered one of the worst storms to hit the US Eastern Seaboard. At least 100 deaths in the US have been linked to this storm. Residents in both New Jersey and New York have been facing a huge range of crises, especially for the coastal communities. Fortunately, Tiji volunteers have been vigilantly providing assistance at these key locations. We'll first go to the neighborhood of New Dorp on Staten Island. The food that's been prepared this morning has been put on the Tsuji van already, and uh, we're going to head out right now. So I will see you at Staten Island. Today we are ready to go to Staten Island. Yesterday we went to visit the New Drop community after the disaster. We found that they are cleaning house and there are no foods, no heaters, so we want to bring some hot soup to warm their hearts. So right now we're in route to Staten Island. As you can see, we are all jam-packed like sardines in the van right now. We have 11 people, including me and my camera person, Nico. Uh, the reason is because we're carpooling and also because gas right now is really difficult to access. From the New York chapter office to Staten Island, it should be 40 minutes without traffic. Today's traffic conditions are not too bad so far. We are expecting to arrive at our destination within an hour. So, Peter and San San, we will go to visit every house to take all the information. Then we can follow up with their needs later. On the way to New Dorp on Staten Island, May Tu explained and assigned a day's task to all the volunteers. She also reminded them to stay safe during the operation. After an hour drive, we finally arrived to New Dorp. The area was so devastated to the point that residents are still without power. This is uh, one of the I must need equipment today because as you see just looking around me even though the waters have receded but there are still some areas that might still have water in there and it's just better to get around with boots so these are going to be my best friend today. The day before yesterday, we received a call from Mr. Chen. Even though we don't know each other, we think this is a good chance for us to meet. Because of this disaster, we see a lot of warm-hearted people. I have been well prepared, but I didn't know that the hurricane will hit the community so badly. I told myself it's going to be okay because there is the second floor. I was thinking when the flood came, please do not go up to the second floor. I have relatively small damages and all my family is alright. I will fix the things quickly and come back whenever it's done. They've been declared that it will take three to six months to actually fully recover on Staten Island because most of the cables have been soaked and it's most likely they have to redo all the rewiring. So right now I'm walking along Center Place. This is one of, as you can see, where the water has not completely receded yet. We are actually following our city volunteers right now. We're going to go actually meet a Congressman Grimm's assistant to get a better idea of what the current situation is and what's needed. As you can see, I have to be careful. And there's stuff littered everywhere. The, probably the biggest problem everybody's having right now is the fact that they don't have electricity. Uh, no electricity, no heat, it's going to get colder, and many don't have any place to stay. Staten Island is considered the forgotten borough. It's, it's always the case. You know, it's unfortunate that that's, even during time of tragedy, it, we still feel that way. I'm fortunate enough, I have a great group of good friends and everything that came in to help me. I, I can't thank them enough. I've had people come from all over to help dig us out and everything. So. It's been, it's been a little tough. After we came in here to help, we see a lot of different people from different groups. They deliver pizza and hamburgers. Then we bring hot soup. It's the accumulation of love. It's a huge strength of war. You know, we just started coming down here. We've been coming, this is our, I think our fourth day, coming down here and helping out. When we got down here, the house was, all the water was gone, but it was about eight feet of water that had been in that house, and they lost, and they lost everything. I mean, it's just, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Especially in the nighttime, it seems like blankets and sleeping bags are probably the most needed thing. You know, letting the people down, down here in Staten Island know that, that people care.
We notice that many units has come in to help. We want to let them know that not only the Chinese want to help, but the people from other communities, they come here to provide food and warm heart. And they are cleaning up their homes in such cold weather. The most needed is a hot warm soup. We really want to hand the soup to their hands so that they can have some warm. However, we see that most of them are really want to go home to clean up their homes. Some people even do not have mood to drink the hot soup. From seeing them being so nervous, we were worried for them and we hope they are fine. We hope that next week when we come in here, perhaps we can have some debit cards or hot foods, which is a way to provide warm to them. Are you guys okay? Yes, thank you. Yes, we are. Thank you anyway. People are strong. They have a very, very strong strength. And then a lot of people help, that's good. I feel like every people has a chance every time. So don't give up. So this is Staten Island, the smallest borough of New York City with a population of over 470,000 people. And you've seen that they've lost a lot, but the key word here is resiliency. And Siji will continue to follow up with the people here overall to let them know that they have not been forgotten. And our hearts reach out to them. Cost of devastation from Sandy could cost up to $50 billion. Despite these challenges, New Jersey's Governor Chris Christie has engaged on a slow but successful road to restore the Garden State back to normalcy. We went to visit Mayor Joseph Champagne, a previous guest on our show, to see how he is helping the people move forward in South Toms River, the little town with a big heart. South Tom's River. I'm out here with my children. Two of my children lost everything they owned. Our good mayor kept trick-or-treating for us. So we got the kids together and lifted their spirits and put smiles on their faces, at least for today. Trick-or-treating was scheduled on the 30th of October. When the superstorm was announced uh, that it was coming, we uh, made the decision to uh, postpone it and a lot of the parents were very happy to, to, to hear that because we didn't want to put our children in harm's way. Candy, sugar stuff, junk. My daughters are just, see, my daughters are hard workers, so what their pr biggest problem is, everything they've ever worked for, they've lost. My daughter's on a second floor, so she can't even get into her home, so mm -hmm. every single little thing is just gone. And after the superstorm went through, we had another issue. Are we going to have the trick-or-treating when one-third of our town is still in the dark? We went door to door um, to speak with parents and um, I even had a chance to speak with some of the kids. They said to me that they definitely want to have chick or treat. <laughs> my name is Keith Ketchum. I, I set up all my Christmas, uh, my Christmas stuff, my, my Halloween stuff every year for the children. I set up my cones to keep everybody safe and everything's for the children. To keep everybody safe, to keep everybody in spirits after everything that has gone wrong. Trick-or-treat. They are honorary member of South Toms River from now on, okay? They will always remember South Toms River because that's all they kept saying. My mom, is South Toms River going to happen? I said, we have a good mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Comparatively with uh, the surrounding towns, uh, our town um, is considered lucky. Several houses burned onto the ground. There were houses that really pretty much were inundated, particularly in Seaside and also in Pelican Island. Uh, are inhabitable and I was very fortunate to have met Shushi. I was in a play with them. This was just entertainment uh, in nature and a couple of days later this foundation came uh, to our aid in South Towns River and the sur surrounding towns. Right now we're going to take the back road through the town of Beechwood and this way you can see some of their, their problems that they're having. They still have 800 residents without power. That's why the mayor felt the need to go ahead and contact your organization. And it, it's a blessing that he had to contact. They're totally empty, evacuated. 
the homes are basically destroyed on that island. Okay. All right, well, stay strong, okay? Okay. Hi. He's got my number because you know me if you need to use the truck or something. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We'll continue into Central Regional High School. They are host housing people that are in need, plus they have a distribution center. Those who have lost their homes uh, had no choice but to come to that particular shelter and other shelters. There's about 21 shelters in Ocean County right at the second. This shelter right now is being used as both a temporary shelter for people who were displaced, and it's also being used as a distribution point for food, clothing. Oatmeal, bread, cereal, people in the community they're just donating. It's been crazy. There's been a lot of people coming in. It's really sad to see. Some of these people haven't been back to their property and since the storm. They were evacuated and haven't been able to get back. So today they came to apply for a permit so that they could go back and remove some personal belongings. Uh, they have a limited permit that allows them to go back, remove the belongings, and then they have to leave the island. We were living in Seaside Heights, but now we're staying with my sister. We want to go back and see what happened to our houses, but we can't. They're not going to be able to go back to their homes for a long time, if at all. Some are structurally damaged where they can never be habitated again. The elections are going off regardless, and they're having all kinds of alternate methods of voting. We really do not have any issue as far as uh, accommodating local residents to uh, go and exercise their, their right to vote. Yeah, I'm sure you have a good idea for whom am I going to vote. Who's going to win? Who might, who's going to win? Who's going to win? The best is going to win. Who? The best. Uh, Come on. Mitt Romney. <laughs> <laughs> Tiji volunteers actually returned to South Toms River yesterday to provide emergency cash cards, instant rice, and warm blankets to the storm survivors. But we now turn to another storm ravaged area Tiji has been visiting, the Rockaways in Queens. Many of the residents' homes have become uninhabitable. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg estimates up to 40,000 residents will need to relocate overall in New York City. I have made to a Tsiji volunteer who has been part of Tsiji's Sandy Relief efforts all along. Welcome, May. Hi, Ginger. So can you tell me what you recall most from the Rockaways? Yes, and we uh, were there first time. It was dark and freezing. Uh, it's around 4 o'clock. Most organizations uh, were leaving. However, we just got in to set the tent to serve a cup of coffee or a cup of uh, hot soup. Mm -hmm. I think this is most important and efficient effort we can do for them. Indeed it is, and it's a good thing Tsiji is there because the people's unity and strength is being tested there. Let's go see how the families are pulling together. This is my house right here. My room's right here in this window. These couches were couch here, couch there. The TV was up over there, but look, it's gone. You see it? The backyard? Look, that wall is gone. If you look to the right, see it? The balcony fell backwards, you know what I mean? It's, it's in my backyard right here. Right, that's the balcony right there, under there. We were actually upstairs, and the water made its way to the like, fifth step. And uh, we had to come down. We came right here. My little brother can't swim. He's only 10, and my mom can't swim. My dad put my little brother on his back. When we got into the alleyway to get out of my house, the water was up to here, but it was pushing. It was pushing us out through the street, so it helped us. If it would have been pushing the other way, it would have been pulling us into the bay. I have my stuff in here, my phone in here. I picked it up, just holding everything like this hard. And my mom on my other arm, hysterical crying, with everything in my hand. I'm like, you'll be all right, all right, you'll be all right. At this point, it's like up to my neck. I'm six one, like I said, so it's pretty hard. My cousins live up the block. They were stuck in their house. We go in the house, there's a little four-year-old girl there, so I tell them, I get on my back. I tell her to get on my back, she's holding on to my neck. I'm like, if, I was like, I might fall, because you don't know what's under the water. On the way there, I fell, you know what I mean? So I didn't want to have her in danger. I was like, just hold on to my neck. I was like, if I fall, we're going to get back up. Woke up the next morning, and that's what we came home to, this whole thing. What am I going to do, cry? Sit here and cry? What's it going to do for me? Is it going to build my house? My tears ain't going to build my house. Me smiling, me being positive will be, it's just good to be positive and not stress myself out about this. People are saying, oh, I can't wait to have my heat. I can't wait to have my electric. And I'm like, I'm just thinking like, it's the least of my worries. Like heat and electric right now, 
I have no house. I was like, I was like, I have no car. I was like, I have, I have nothing. I was like, I'm broke. So it's very hard. I never thought the day would come where I'd say we were homeless. I didn't eat for the first two days because I just was in shock, I guess. But right now, the Legion here is helping us a lot. We just went and got socks and underwears. It's hard to go through that, like go in there and look for stuff. But my son got a jacket and shoes. And we all found some clothes, and they have lots of stuff. And they're there every day. And if you need somewhere to go and cry and talk to somebody, they're there for you. This is something that we have to do. We're Americans. This is what we do to pull together. I picked up my friends. They volunteered also, and we came here to do this. I had so much. My home was, I had electricity. I was safe. How could I not? How could I sit at home and not do anything? I have friends that live in this community that lost everything. They had nothing. They didn't have food here. We come here to eat, and they feed us real well here. My wife came and got clothes for all the family, and she didn't get none for herself. Figured I'd do the right thing and come get some for her. Our front, our house is right down the road from it. Yeah, that used to be ours. This here is the water line, and I'm and I'm 5'11". I'm one inch from being six feet. Yeah, we're looking at about six, seven feet of water right here, because... You know, we stayed as long as we could, and then we got we, we we decided to leave. And then we come back. Here it is, disaster zone. We just put blankets on the floor, sleep on the floor. These guys are from the help centers for the at the church, and they're helping us do the cleanup work, dragging everything out of here for us. So you know, it could be worse, but we're all alive. The house is gutted, so we have nothing we didn't have anything to eat no shelter we had babies we have volunteers from manhattan harlem bronx brooklyn we have police officers from all over it's a great feeling to see that there's so many people who want to help and make a difference unfortunately there were people who were sitting on their hands and watching this unfold on their televisions think that they had it bad because their cables out or electrics out just think about the children there's children out there they're cold, they don't have a roof over their heads. I do that. I do it for them. So, I promise, I come back. Okay, I come again. We brought some basic hygienic supplies, like toothbrushes, towels, because what they had in their houses is gone. We brought 20 boxes of supplies. Each box has five kits, so in total, that's 100 bags. So those supplies should be enough for now. In the Rockways, at the American Legion, there are lots of food and clothing. But the residents here are far away from American Legion. They ran out of gas. They can't drive their cars. They have to walk to get their stuff. In this really cold weather, we give them what they need the most, blankets and hasu. We um, survived Hurricane Sandy. With the good help of these people, you're going to have some nice warm soup, right? Yes. Yes? And what do you say, girls? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need bread? No, I need, I need soup. Corn. I grew up here in, in this town. These are all my family and friends here, so I drove all the way from Missouri. We have a full truck here on 11th Road. If anybody needs anything, come on down. They can have whatever they want. So how many days are you going to stay here? Unt until we rebuild. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Going back to the return to normalcy in New Jersey, we next went to visit Amanda Nashawat, another previous guest on our show. We were surprised to discover that the people of Secaucus were able to recover quite quickly. Right next to Manhattan, across the George Washington Bridge, Sandy has been for New Jersey the worst natural disaster of its history. Although the Secaucus Exchange Building wasn't flooded, its 2,000 residents have been without electricity since the storm. Every day, volunteers and members of the town hall go there and provide everyone a warm meal. What we wanted to do was to feed people because most of the people are actually throwing out all the food that's in their fridge because it's not working. And we created a barbecue for the people that are living at Secaucus Exchange. Our lights went off about 7 p.m. So it's from Monday night. Today is Friday. I'm charging my phone, my laptop, and my mom's phone right now. Like the community here has honestly has gotten closer from how it used to be. Like nobody barely talked. Now I 
everybody's like communicating with each other. I feel bad because so many people here are my friends. Some of my friends live here and they, I'm serving them food basically. You feel sorry. We had this one woman call where her mother's 106 years old and needed heat. There's so many volunteers in town, and I think that's the most incredible part. You know, for me, being a young person, I've never been able to really see a situation like this where the entire community is coming together, helping one another, helping elders. We're going to be there, believe me. We need, we need as much help as we can get. Anything, even if it's a little bit, we said even a little bit helps. So, yeah, and these are all friends. Everybody comes to help. My part was gone. Well, I lost everything I own. I got the greatest friends in the world, so stay with him until I find out. You gotta get another place. Start over. FEMA actually has been making its rounds in Sea Caucus um, to see where, where all the damage is and what can be done. Around here is basically where um, the mayor's house was. This is a major flood zone here. This is where the Sea Caucus High School is. Well, personally, I lost my own home. Um, I was affected in Irene, and with this last storm, Sandy, I had eight, eight feet of house, eight feet of water through my home, so my home is pretty much destroyed right now. On a larger scale, we still have people that are out of power, people that have no heat. We have about 2,000 residents in that situation now, so we're fo focusing all of our skills on what's happening out here. If you look behind us, you know, we're feeding 1,000 people today. Around the town of Secaucus, people had to wait up to eight hours in order to get gas. In some parts of the town affected by the flooding, the curbs are full of furniture and the residents are now facing other issues. Do not take need for insurance, thanks. Some people like during the day came and tried to take stuff. We went down, my mom yelled at someone and tried to take it. Got to about here, I think. Connor's high school was flooded as well, and he is now spending his time to help his parents clean up their home. Secaucus and many other towns of New Jersey had the chance to receive help right after Superstorm Sandy. One week after, the roads, parks, and streets are almost clean, and life is almost back to normal. This week has been a test of faith and of the human spirit for everyone involved. Yet somehow, city volunteers were able to deliver the necessary aid to the destinations without fail. One of the volunteers to make this happen is Scott Huang, who I have here with me today. Welcome, Scott. Hi, Ginger. So first off, how were you able to get the fuel during the relief efforts? Uh, due to the gas shortage, we got lucky. We got help from the local precinct, which is a 109 precinct. They help us to cut into the line. To, uh, we don't have to wait for a long line to get gas. Wow, okay. Then what about the manpower? How were you able to get that? Uh, we got lucky also. Some of our volunteers, they are very um, uh, helpful to put the news, post the news on the Facebook and to encourage our volunteer to respond to our office. And so far, every day they have people calling and say they are willing to be our volunteer to help out too. That's really good. Well, Scott, keep your strength and thank you very much. Thank you, Ginger. My team and I are exceptionally proud to be part of this experience, to witness the humanity and compassion prevail during these tough times. Our hearts of blessings are with the storm survivors. I'm Ginger Chang and I'll see you next week.